What is going on guys? My name is Ben. How are you guys doing today? And what I have in this video is just to talk to you guys about IDE hard drives. Now, normally these days you know, we're using SATA hard drives which are a little bit faster than the IDE hard drives because the IDE hard drives are actually the old style uh, way of hard drive connections and now the newer style is SATA connections. All right, and SATA connections are more than likely to be found on laptops and then you're seeing it on desktops these days. And the desktops back in the old days used IDE hard drives. I believe the laptops as well, but it probably got a smaller connection or something. I don't know. Or maybe laptops back then only used SATA hard drives. I don't know. But I want to talk to you guys about IDE hard drives because let's say if you had a computer, a desktop computer, and you have one IDE hard drive in there, which is your main hard drive for your operating system. All right. Now, what if you decide to add another hard drive in there and you just want to use that as a secondary hard drive to install a different operating system on there or you just want to use it for extra storage? Uh, well, you may run into some problems when doing that. I definitely ran into this problem when I first put another hard drive in uh, my HP A250N because it had a Seagate are the IDE hard drive in there and then I just put another Western Digital uh, IDE hard drive in there which was 120 gigabytes so I got two 120 gigabyte hard drives in that desktop and the first time I did it without doing anything to it but just plugging the second hard drive in there both my hard drives were not recognized it say please select boot device by going into the boot menu and whatever and I checked in the BIOS and actually none of my hard drives were recognized. So I decided to unplug the second hard drive I put in there and leave the first one in there. Now it recognized the first one again and it boot back into my operating system which was Windows XP. Then I unplugged the power cable for my main hard drive that has my operating system on it, plugged in the other one, went into the BIOS and it was recognized and then I was able to do whatever I want that way and then you know, I thought it was a hard drive failure, then I put another hard drive in there, you know, which was 40 gigabytes, which was this one right here, and same thing, uh, both hard drives were not recognized, and then there was just this one small little thing that I did not know about, and I want to talk to you guys about this plug right here, which is actually not a plug, this is more of uh, your uh, modification settings, they call this jumper settings, alright? And you have your options right here, and let me see if I can show you in the webcam right here. But as you can see right there, you got CS, which stands for Cable Select. You got Slave, and you have, oh, what was it, Master? Yeah, Master, and then you have PM2. Let me explain what each of these options are. All right, so CS stands for Cable Select. And first of all, before I go any further, this is the old style hard drive connection for uh, hard drives back in the day, which is IDE, and then you have the current ones out there, uh, which is a SATA connection. So you can see the difference. You know, this was the uh, power, no, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry. This is the data transfer port for the IDE hard drive, and then over here is the uh, power to the IDE hard drive. And then on the SATA hard drive right here, this is the uh, power port for the SATA hard drive and then this is the data transfer port which my finger is covering up there and over here is the jumper settings for the SATA hard drive I don't know how the jumper settings work for the SATA hard drive but I will get into that uh, later if I do run into an issue and it's actually the same reason why uh, for this one uh, to make both my hard drives unrecognized but let me explain each of these options for the IDE hard drive. So first one is CS, which stands for Cable Select. Cable Select is basically where you have a special uh, cable plugged up into your IDE hard drive, and that's supposed to identify which hard drive is master and which hard drive is slave. All right, that's that's all that I know. It's supposed to detect which one's whom, which, which is from what I've read so far, it sounds to be the more complicated pr process. All right, now the next one, Maybe it's not complicated, but uh, I don't know. Next one is Slave. So Slave is pretty much uh, detecting your hard drive as a secondary hard drive. 
that that that's pretty much all to it i'm sure there's more to it but slave as of right now it's the second to the first one and then master is like the main hard drive your first hard drive so master uh, is set on my main hard drive right now uh, in my hp a250n and that that's like uh, with my main operating system on there if you have like a different operating system on each hard drive then uh, it'll still be master on the other one if that makes any sense and then PM2 stands for power management 2 and that's basically where it allows the hardware to boot up when it's in standby mode that's pretty much it I don't know too much about PM2 but that's all that I have found out so far now here's one thing that's missing in here that I that's not in this hard drive. I don't know why when this was given to me that piece was not in there But there's supposed to be a piece in there and that's how you're able to you know, Set the jumper settings you want for this hard drive and Because all, all you have to do is put that piece into these you know, holes right here and make sure they're lined up So you can select your options for example. I want to use the slave option, right? You see how the slave option is right there and actually what I'm gonna do is is before I explain this, I have a clip to show you guys how you can set certain jumper settings on your IDE hard drive if you still use those. So that way you can and have it recognize it as a secondary hard drive, or if you just have if you're just replacing a hard drive, then you can set it to master, and then that way your hard drive is set the way it should be, and then when you uh, open up windows uh, or whatever operating system you're running then it should recognize the hard drive all right without further ado uh, I'm gonna show you how you can sell, uh, set your settings and in my case I'm gonna be setting this hard drive well not this one in particular but the other one uh, to the slave option and what you're gonna need is a pair of tweezers and that's it that's all you need all right so here is the Western digital 120 gigabyte and as you can see there are options right there which is cable select slave master and then pm2 and as you can see this was the block that i was talking about earlier in my video you have to take that out and then you have to readjust it and then put it back in the option you want so in my case i want the slave option and it's the second one that's basically all you have to do to set your hard drive settings with the jumper and that's it that's all you have to do to change your settings on this hard drive right here and i just wanted to mention this to you guys i didn't and explain I didn't mention that in the clip that you just saw, but if you take a look at this diagram right here, it tells you how that little piece should be put. And you're going to put it in certain settings such as slave, master, and then you cable select, or in this case, this one is a, a sing oh, never mind, single or master, master with slave, and slave. All right, so they give you a diagram of how to... Uh, adjust your settings uh, or put your IDE hard drive in a certain setting if you want it to be the slave hard drive the master hard drive the, the cable select or uh, the power management uh, all right so that's it thank you so much for watching and all I ask is that when you're doing this please do not use a screwdriver or like a flathead screwdriver to pry out that little block in the jumper setting because I, I did see one video where one person was trying to do that and they ended up actually chipping off the top part of that piece and all I ask is that you don't do that as you can see a pair of tweezers was able to fit in there it's a it's very thin very small and just all I ask is that you try not to break anything when trying to do this it's a very easy process you don't want to break it and then put it in and next you know the next time you want to change it you can all right thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video if you guys have any questions go ahead and leave a comment down below and I will do my best to answer them